days a day A banner's always a coming my way Welcome back to another strange edition of It's a Grim Life. Right now, I am walking through the quad of Oglethorpe University, where I have not one, not two, but three strange stories to tell. One is of a crypt hidden in the basement of one of these buildings here on the university campus, not to be opened until the year 8113. Another one of a circus animal brought here to be dissected and studied and buried in an unmarked grave on campus. And lastly, the fight to bring a general's remains here to the campus to be buried, to be interred here on the campus grounds forever. But did it happen? Follow me while I take you on this strange, historical, bizarre, weird journey on Oglethorpe University's campus. Oh! Who's that I see walking in these woods? Why, it's Little Red Riding Hood. Hey there, Little Red Riding Hood. You sure are looking good. You're everything a big bad wolf could want. The building behind me is the Hearst Building, and its basement holds one of the most unique, strangest, weirdest, and coolest rooms I have ever seen in my life, the Crypt of Civilization. It is a time capsule. In fact, it is probably, well, it has been recognized as the first successful time capsule by the Guinness Book of World Records. Let's go take a look at it. As you know, people fill time capsules with all kinds of things, all kinds of different artifacts, whether it's something simple and mundane from everyday life in that period of time to something that is historical in one way, shape, or another that they want future generations to know about. Think of it as a buried treasure, if you will. With that being said, every good buried treasure needs to have an X marks the spot. And this crypt of civilization here in Oglethorpe University is no exception. In fact, at the entrance to the Hearst building, uh, where the crypt is in the basement, there is an X uh, carved, etched into the stone right outside the front door. And it makes me wonder how many people walk across it every single day and not know that it's there, or even more importantly, what's below it. Now, honestly, I passed over it myself. Of course, I didn't know it was there, but the person who told me about it, who opened the Crypt of Civilization's door for me, not the actual crypt, because that won't open for a while, but the who led me down to where the crypt is, made sure that I saw the X, and that X is right there. The Crypt of Civilization is directly below where I am standing. Let's go inside and go take a look at the door. We are at that point now where we have to keep our voices down. We're inside and there's classes going on. It's a classroom right behind me and all the doors are shut, so we need to keep it quiet. So there's a, right now, down these steps, all the way around, down in the basement is where we are going. Not a lot of people know about it here at Oglethorpe University. Uh, some of the security, a lot of the students, but hopefully, Hopefully, they watch the video. If they watch the Grim Life Collective video, they will learn about it. I guess that in a way makes me some sort of grim teacher, grim instructor. And if anybody is watching this and they see this and they want somebody to come and talk to them about weird things, 
Don't hesitate to give me a call. It's right there. Now, how cool is this? Let's take a look at this thing. It is a metal door, wired shut. Behind it, the contents of this room, the contents of this room will not be opened until the year 8,113. That's, that's seriously a long time from now. This is the guy that created it. This is the guy who thought up the idea of the time capsule, this room, the crypt of civilization. His name was Thornwell Jacobs, and he was the president of the Oglethorpe University here in Atlanta. And what's really cool is the idea that, that he got to create this crypt. Um, what's put the idea in his head was all the different openings of the tombs in the 20s and 30s of the pharaohs and uh, um, over in Egypt and the pyramids. Uh, it, it got him thinking, which is, you know, a good thing, especially if you're president of a university where people are learning and people are teaching. But it's this guy. And what was cool is um, how he came up with the number 8113 for the crypt opening. He, he took the moment that he was gonna put the, you know, seal the room, all the way back to the Egyptian calendar. Egyptian calendar, Mayan calendar, I can't really remember. But that amount of time, and then from there into the future, it came to 8,113. And that is when this room, this, 20 by 10 room behind this welded shut steel door waterproofed room is going to open that is if we are all still here if this earth is still here if there's not some sort of weird nuclear blast but this is recognized by the guinness book of world records as the first the very first time capsule that's pretty freaking awesome inside our Oh, here's a picture of what it looks like on the inside. Um, this was taken before it was sealed in 1940. The Oglethorpe University Crypt of Civilization. An interior view of the, civil, of the Crypt of Civilization before it was sealed in 1940. Photographed below are containers and materials stored in the crypt. There's some of the things. Looks like there's an old typewriter, some dolls sewing machine um, there's all kinds of pictures and video and audio recordings of people from the you know, United States presidents to Adolf Hitler to anybody that was of important historical significance in the 40s that is all in here for somebody many thousands of years from now to open and see Here's some more pictures. Hey, that's pretty awesome. I mean, look at that. I mean, there's the door. Same thing, right there. And there's still a seal. So that's pretty crazy. I mean, it looks like that the door itself at one point, like the building was built around it. I don't know if the building was built around this, which would kind of make sense, or um, if the door, this in this photo is a picture of the door, um, in that photo right there, if, if that door, this massive steel door was picked up and brought in here to seal it, which I guess that makes more sense than having this gigantic building that you saw when we first walked in here um, built around it. Uh, but inside, it even has an original, a copy of the original, or one of the original manuscripts of uh, Margaret Mitchell's Gone with the Wind, as well as over 800 other um, 
well-known publications from the Bible to the Quran to um, Dante's Inferno. It is all in here. If I was opening this right now and pulling out and going through everything, I'd be in my glory. That's awesome. So hopefully, somewhere down the line, when we are all dead and buried or cremated or the earth is no more, either humans or aliens are going to open this crypt and they're gonna think it's the coolest thing because we as a human race are awesome. And the fact that we do things like this and it's, it's there's no words for it. Humans and what we do to remember things and the, the extent of what we would do to leave a lasting impression of what means something to us is pretty phenomenal. So if you're ever in Oglethorpe University and you want to see something really cool, ask to see the Crypt of Civilization. Now let's go in search of another story. Strange Oglethorpe University story number two. Behind me is the university here on campus and it has a strange, bizarre, and kind of grim, well, I consider it pretty grim actually, story attached to it. Way back in the day, not entirely sure when, I'm sure can find it, but Barnum and Bailey, the circus, was traveling here through Atlanta and while here in Atlanta, their elephants were poisoned by arsenic. Now, I can't tell you if it was done intentionally, if it was done by accident, but usually if you think about it, poisoning by arsenic was probably done intentionally. Well, a lot of the elephants got sick, and one of them that died was requested to be brought here to Oglethorpe University. And it was at this building behind this building, and I'll show you that in a minute where it was. The carcass of the elephant was brought here, skinned, dissected, studied, and buried beneath this library. The elephant's name was Palm. So, a pretty grim story for a university. Now, much of this building wasn't here. This, this first part was here uh, when the elephant carcass was brought here. So it was behind and to the left over on that side, uh, which is where, where we are going to be going in a minute. But everything behind this main building was actually built on afterwards. It was built on top of where they buried Palm, the arsenic poisoned elephant. And it, the grave for Palm is unknown. They do not know where Palm bones his, her, remains are. So somewhere, if somebody decided to dig behind this library, they very well could find elephant bones. It's a pretty awesome building. I mean, every building on this campus is absolutely gorgeous. It reminds me a lot of the Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., but, I mean, not like it. I mean, the one in Georgetown is massive in its own right in its own self but this one here is beautifully creepy and very awesome i mean go on take a look It's like a castle. I mean, it really is like a castle here. Absolutely gorgeous. But now we are at, we are at the back corner of the library. And it was here underneath this wall, this part that was added on that uh, Palm the elephant was 
brought. Well, supposedly they do not know the exact location. And if you look online, you won't be able to find the exact location, but it is in this general vicinity um, underneath these walls that was added on where the final resting place of the Barnum and Bailey's circus elephant is. So if you're out this way, do not recommend digging, but if you do, don't. You will get in trouble. But you can come here and visit this castle-like, earthly, gigantic tombstone for one of Barnum and Bailey's circus elephants that sadly died from arsenic poison. Grim indeed, but absolutely beautiful at the same time. It's kind of ironic, kind of bizarre. Grim in itself. Let's go. And for our third and final tale here at Oglethorpe University, the topic returns once again to Thornwell Jacobs, who was the original president here at the university. It seems he had a bit of an obsession with General Oglethorpe and tried to get his remains dug up and brought here to be placed forever on the campus grounds and as a memorial, as an ongoing one gigantic stone learning memorial. But it never happened. It seems Savannah, Georgia caught wind of this and was like, you know, if you're going to dig him up and move his body, he should be here. So there became a bit of a feud between Oglethorpe University here in Atlanta and the city of Savannah, Georgia, where he's currently buried. They said to themselves, well, if you guys are fighting over him and he's somebody of that importance, we're going to keep him here. We don't want to move him. We want to keep him. So the body still remains where it was. It was never brought here to Atlanta, and it's not in Savannah. But here on the campus, uh, Thornwell Jacobs actually built a room here in Lupton Hall, which is right behind me. The Bimby Room here on Oglethorpe University would have acted as the final resting place for General Oglethorpe. In fact, this room itself was built specifically to hold his remains. Um, as you can see, it is very reminiscent of a mausoleum that you would find in a cemetery. I don't know if you've ever been inside a mausoleum in a cemetery, but we have been in quite a few. It has become something that we love to do they are such cool, serene places. And this place here is equally as beautiful. Uh, but sadly, they never got General Olga, General Olga Thorpe. Oh my gosh, now I'm speaking all over the place. But they never got his remains. Sadly, they never got his remains. And this room is now only used for meetings only now for meetings but it does have a really cool history to it and that's it thank you once again for going with me on these strange and bizarre and sometimes uncomfortable journeys i am here at oglethorpe university in atlanta georgia and until tomorrow stay tuned stay scared and have a good night thank you